guys, it's Pastor Eastman, and if I got a treat for you today, Johnny Walsh, one of our lead teachers at Redeemer Kids, is going to be sharing with us how to make the most out of the coronavirus. You know there are some good things that are happening. We're going to scratch around. We're going to find how we can literally make the most out of this situation. So check this out. Here's Johnny. Hey everybody, Johnny Walsh here. I am so excited to be sharing a video message with you today. I really wish we could be doing it in person, but obviously due to the coronavirus, it's not possible, but here's what I wanna do. I know there's a lot to be scared about and worried about with the pandemic and coronavirus, but I wanna to choose to focus on the positive today. So here's what I have for you. I have a top 10 list of upsides to coronavirus. So here we go. Number one, yes, we have to wear masks in public, but guess what? Now we get to all look like doctors. You know how many people I've told in the grocery store that I was a doctor? I'm just kidding. That's a lie. That would be wrong. But it's kind of fun to pretend like one. Number two, epic blanket forts. Oh my gosh, we have built so many blanket forts. We've got snacks in there. We've watched movies in there. We brought our puppy in there. The boys got to sleep in one overnight. It was incredible. So number three, more time to hang out, laugh, talk, cuddle with my family. It's been amazing. Number four, global kindness and giving. I don't know if you've seen some of the stories of the companies and the people and the money that's been given to those in need. I mean, this has just brought out kindness in people. So I'm so thankful for that. Number five, it's a giant reminder of the things that matter and the things that don't. How many things did you think were so important in your life that you were so caught up in that just don't matter anymore? Hopefully, maybe you can put some more things in perspective. Number six, you get to go to church in your PJs. You get to go to school in your PJs. I get to work in my PJs. In fact, I don't think I changed out of PJs all day. The only reason I'm not in PJs right now is I'm shooting this video. So I think that's pretty cool. Number six, kids get to be kids again. We have had sword fights and bike rides and sidewalk chalk and water balloon fights and so many things that we didn't normally do because we were too busy rushing around. Number seven, uh, get to catch up with old friends. And this might be number eight, actually. I think this is number eight. I got lost track. Number eight, catching up with old friends. Things that I hadn't done in a long time. People I haven't talked to. I've talked to over FaceTime and it's been great to catch up. Number nine, finding and playing with old toys. Do you know how many toys that my kids had forgot about that were in the back of the playroom closet that they pulled out? Costumes and Nerf guns and things. I mean, how cool is that? And then number 10, the upside of coronavirus is being grateful for the little things like toilet paper. Who would have ever thought that toilet paper was this amazing quantity or, or, or item that people you know, nurtured and wanted and fought over. But sure enough, that's what's sadly off the shelves. But in all seriousness, you guys, I think it's funny how tough times can make us look at things differently if we choose to let them. So. If you take the story of Joseph in the Bible, for example, if you know the story, great. If you don't, I'm just gonna retell it really quickly. Joseph was a guy, he was the youngest of a ton of brothers and his brothers didn't like him because you know his dad kind of played favorites and gave him stuff. So what did his brothers do? They chose to sell him into slavery. They captured him and sold him off. And he ended up going to another country, working as a servant in his house, he ended up being accused of doing something he didn't. He got thrown in jail for it. And then while in jail, he ran into this guy who used to work in the Pharaoh's palace. So the Pharaoh was like the president of Egypt. And this guy had this dream and Joseph interpreted his dream for him and the guy was extremely grateful. Well, later on that guy was let out and he went back to work for Pharaoh and Pharaoh had a dream. And the prisoner remembered, oh, there was this guy when I was in jail, his name was Joseph and he can interpret dreams. Let me go get him. So Joseph was let out of jail and he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream for him. And this is what he said. He said, your dream means that your country, Egypt, this country is gonna have seven great years, prosperity and abundance, but then it's gonna be some bad times. So what I encourage you to do is why don't you save up during those good times? So when the bad times come, you'll have things to draw from. Well, Pharaoh really appreciated his news and his words. So he let him out of jail and gave him a job. And Joseph did such a good job. He ended up moving up the ranks and working in Pharaoh's palace and becoming number two only to Pharaoh in the country. He was number two in charge. Well, those seven years of, of plenty came and it was great. And they saved and saved and saved. So when the seven years of famine came, the country had enough. And guess who came knocking on the palace door for supplies during that time of famine? Joseph's brothers who sold him into slavery. Now he had a choice. 
he could be mad and upset and so angry at them during this rough time. But he chose to see what God had done instead. Genesis 50 verse 20 says this, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So here's my question to you today. You could choose to be crazy upset about everything going on in the pandemic, or you can choose to know that God will do good out of the situation if you let him. He will teach you things. He will allow you to have different relationships and, and affect different people in different ways. So let me ask you this. With your choice today, whose life, whose mood, whose day could you end up saving if you chose to let him? Ask yourself that. Let's pray. God, I pray that you just allow us to see the potential good in this situation. I know it is hard. I know it is difficult. I know it is scary. But Lord, you are going to do some amazing things if we choose to let you work in this moment. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, Johnny, great message. I loved it. Thanks for encouraging me to look for the best, even when things aren't going too good. You know, as we do this, God's moving mightily in us. So hang on to your faith. Good things are happening. You just got to scratch around and look for it. Till next time, I'm Eastman. We'll see you.